Hi, my name's Daniel. Welcome to the Armageer.net blog. On today's episode, I'm going to be talking about the sale of St Andrews Stadium. Who owns it now, how the stadium sale actually worked, and why that might present problems in the future. Quite a few clubs in the Championship have sold their stadium to dodge their way around financial fair play rules. Blues joined that group of clubs last May when they sold St Andrews um, to another company so that they may also meet their PS obligations. So, who exactly owns St Andrews now? As the 2018 2019 season came to a close, Birmingham City had a PS problem. They'd already been deducted nine points the season before for failing PS rules, and they were in danger of failing again. Despite the EFL um, insisting that Birmingham City sold players to raise some money, uh, Blues defied that and rejected bids to Che Adams in the January transfer window. However, that meant it was imperative that the club did something so that on paper at least they met their obligations. Other clubs in the championship had hit upon an idea, sell their ground to another company owned by the club's owner and use the profit in the transaction as a dodge, a one-off dodge, to get around p and rules. In May 2019, Blues decided to do the same. A company was set up to purchase the ground called Boeing City Stadium Limited. This company has got two directors, uh, Blue CEO, uh, Ren Juan Dong, and fellow director of Boeing City Football Club, Edward Jin Ganang. This company is also a subsidiary of Birmingham Sport Holdings, like the football club is. However, crucially, it was outside the Birmingham City Football Club group of companies, so that by selling the stadium, it took it out of the group and therefore was allowed as a transaction for AFL purposes. So BCFC had an independent valuation of the ground done, which it had to do, otherwise the AFL wouldn't have accepted the sale of the stadium at market value. And then the deed to the ground was transferred to the new company. A bit of financial jiggery procury and presto, Blues no longer failed PNS. So we know that Boeing City Stadium Limited owned the ground now, but how much did they pay for it? Where did that money go? Normally, the easiest way to find out who owns what property is to go to the land registry. You search online, just pay three quid, and as long as you know the full address of the property you're searching for, you can pull down the title deed, which will confirm to you who owns the property and how much they pay for it and when they bought it. This is where we come a little unstuck because I checked the land registry today, Sunday the 23rd of August, and it still shows Birmingham City Football Club PLC, the football club, owns the ground. So someone has not updated the land registry yet. However, using data from companies house, from accounts from various uh, from two companies, we can actually find what the truth is. According to accounts filed by Birmingham City Stadium Limited, we can see that that company purchased St Andrews on May the 20th, 2019, for 22.76 million, borrowing the money from Birmingham Sports Holdings to do so. The accounts of the football club shows that a transaction for 22.76 million to sell the ground has happened and uh, that play, uh, put against the book value which was just over 7 million quid and a, a deferred capital grant which has been released means that the football club banked a profit of 17 million pounds on the transaction. Now while it sounds like a lot of money has changed hands in, in effect it's, it's a paper transaction nothing has. BSH has simply moved one asset, the ground, from one subsidiary to another and booked a profit between the two based on the valuation before and after. It's, it's just paper. Similarly, although now Birmingham City Football Club have to pay rent to Birmingham City Stadium Limited to uh, play at St Andrews, no money's actually gonna change hats. So why are people concerned about this? Now, I'm gonna say this upfront, this is my personal opinion, but I believe that separating football clubs and their grounds is a bad idea. It makes any sale or transfer of a football club to a new owner additionally complicated. And we all know, uh, as I've said in previous videos, that the sale of Birmingham City will be complicated anyway. So we didn't need to add another hurdle. There are examples of this uh, currently. Uh, for example, Charlton Athletic. Uh, you look at the mess of the Charlton Athletic takeover, uh, East Street Investments. Um, Roland du Châtelet, who sold the club to East Street Investments, still owns uh, the Valley and their training ground at Sparrows Lane. And that's exacerbated the whole situation because the word is, is that um, should East Street Investments want to go through with the whole thing, 
then they've got to pay 50 million to Du Chatelet for the ground and the training ground, lest they potentially be evicted. Another club where there's been problems with a, a club not owning the ground is, is the other tenants at St Andrews, Coventry City. Now, uh, back a few years ago, um, they were forced out that they had a, a row with the owners of the Rico Stadium and they moved out to Northampton, came back, sorted that out, got into another legal dispute, and now they're at St Andrews. And while the fans are, are in the main want them to go back to the Rico, it's not going to happen because it is a massive legal mess. And it's all because the club does not own the ground. Now, this doesn't necessarily mean it's going to happen to Blues. I must stress, we, we can't predict the future. We don't know what's going to happen. And I would not say for one second that Blues are definitely going to be in trouble because um, they've moved the ground to another company outside of the club. However, the possibility does exist that it could go tits up. Um, should the club ever be sold, then the ground would need to be sold as well, which causes an additional hurdle. There's also the possibility that the Birmingham City Stadium gets spun out of Birmingham Sports Holdings ownership, or even they moved it onto someone else. There's a, we're a step further down the line to the ground and the club being completely separate entities, and that's never good. Now, I put some links in the description to some of the things I've spoken about so you can read more about it. Um, you can also read my uh, blog, um to see more stuff about why there is an issue with the stadium not being owned by the club. If you've enjoyed this video, please click like. Um, if you want to see more stuff about uh, Birmingham City, the owners, and all the furore around it, then please subscribe to the channel. If, if you tick the little notification bell, then you will get notified the next time I upload a video. Till then, keep right on.